Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of social media. I, I deal with it because I'm starting to be that old guy in every room <laughs> I walk into. Uh, but that's the one, the one positive thing about social media is that uh, those moments, like the one I went through, uh, you know, which is no big deal, mm. it didn't impact, that moment didn't impact my life in a negative way, but it gives a person like me that nobody would listen to before oh an opportunity yeah. to share something uh, that can bring light to something that uh, um, uh, that otherwise, before you know, before social media, wouldn't get attention. Yeah. And, uh, and that's that's the one, you know, positive thing in my eyes with social media, is that things can get spread now. Yeah. So certain behaviors that have been deemed acceptable, like. Like, you know, he shared like it, you know, it is what it is. You just kind of deal with it. You know, it, it's, we shouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah. It's, uh, um, it, it just, it, it's, it's allowing everyone to be educated on some of the things that some people deal with. Absolutely. For, for me personally, as a coach, uh, when everything happened this summer, we were away for, with, uh, our teams were at home and you saw everything happening on social media and the videos and, you had such a sadness and I think we're used to when we have hard problems we talk to our team we have them in the locker room we get to discuss things so for me being older I think I don't run to social media but I saw that my players were mm -hmm. and so for me that was the first thing I felt I just wanted to get everyone together so we could talk uh, so that was one of the first things that I did was uh, get us together on a zoom call um, I had a a psychologist on the call with us that we could just talk through because I just felt like I felt like I knew how they were feeling based on what everyone was posting and uh, I have a predominantly white team in fact Lauren was in last season uh, my only person of color on the team and so um, I felt like we had a lot of talking to do from the position of being white in this situation and what do we do and how do we show up for each other in, in, the, in this moment. And so that's really how our first call went. We talked a lot about what is white privilege. What does that mean? Um, the psychologist walked us through microaggressions and um, uh, the difference between an intent and, and what you actually say. Uh, so all those things I think were really good. And I think what came out of that first call is our team wanted to say to Lauren, please, communicate with us if there's anything we can do um, they want to be aware of it and I think we created some language to have conversations and um, if anyone ever said anything hurtful how we can um, communicate that so I think those were that was a good it was a good first step but uh, it was the opposite of social media for me it was hey I want to get my team together let's have a conversation Lauren I'm curious for for you in that moment um, being on a team of folks that uh, that you sort of show up to every day with, but also um, you're coming into it as well with your lived experience as a black woman, what that's like, what some of those conversations were like, or even as as uh, as, as Coach Beverly is talking through, I'm curious what 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 that was like for you. Yes, I really appreciated it. I think that just with Coach Bev we, um, leading it and giving us this opportunity to learn together because I feel like a lot of us, we have these conversations at home, but we will not have them with the people we're around or with people we're not necessarily comfortable with. So this forced us to come together and talk about things that we probably wouldn't have ever talked about together and just live, talk about others' experiences because pretty much all of us have different experiences, whether we grow up in the, on the western side of the country or in the south or in the north, but just learning about racial differences or inequality and injustice from another side, it was huge. So I definitely appreciated it. And we have a lot more conversation now that's more relaxed and instead of, oh shoot, here we're, ha we're talking about race again, you know? So <laughs> sure. I really appreciate it. And I think it was a great, it was fantastic for our team altogether. And then the other thing with social media that I talk to our players about all the time and I speak to my children about all the time is the my biggest dislike of social media is that everyone on there is there to tell you what they're against. So if you ever express what you're for, you get attacked. Mm. And in real life, 
we need to tell each other what we're for. Because right. if you tell me what you're against, it, like you started and said, let's respect each other's yeah. views. If you tell me what you're against right away, well, my hands are going up. Mm -hmm. Because right away, if what you're against is what I'm about, I'm ready to fight, I'm not yeah. ready to listen. Yeah. But if you tell me what you're for, it opens my ears. And it makes me want to say, you know what? Let me listen to what he's talking about. Because it makes sense. And, and, and I think that's the biggest drawback with social media. This was something I knew where I stood and I was very passionate about speaking up for people of color and also more importantly letting them speak for themselves and so actually Lauren and I both had the chance we got on a call with a zoom call with other SEC student athletes from Arkansas mm -hmm. and a couple other schools and more important than saying anything it was just good for me to listen yeah. um, and like softball there's one black girl on our team and everyone else is white and she's actually the first African-American equestrian collegiate athlete so oh. we've never had the, <laughs> that conversation and um, I think there's still a lot for the equestrian team to do in terms of we never got on a zoom call or anything like that but um, I reached out to my coaches and I was like is there any way we can um, bring this up and speak about it more and we ordered like Black Lives Matter pins to wear at our competitions and stuff like that but there's still a lot more to be said and um, we did ask Jordan Allen is our teammate we asked her about her experiences and we gave her the chance to speak and learn from her I think overall the message is just to open your heart and open your ears and be willing to learn from other people I'm, I'm, I'm old enough where I learned a certain way but I also am in the world of education so I have to know how they learn because they don't care what I know. I have to understand how they learn. And if I can understand how this generation learns, then I can help them. But they can care less how I learned. And, and that's the one thing, social media is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. I don't like it, I don't care for it. But I have to understand how it operates so I can help, so I can help your guys' age group. Because my son's 21 years old, he's a junior in college. And he lives for social media. The, 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 the meatheads that I call my guys that I live with every single day, they live on social media. I'm curious on, on, you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about, I think, right now is it's just not enough to say I'm not racist and just to continue on sort of with your day to day, but how we can sort of actively be anti-racist or actively be standing up for or utilizing our platform. So I'm curious how folks are sort of putting that into action, whether within your teams, whether personally or individually, what does that look like for you, sort of advocacy? Um, what form does that take for, for, for you all? I, th I think personally. Um, I've also never been one to like start a fight or stir up drama, but I've been very inspired the past couple months to speak out against family and friends on Facebook, and that's one downside of social media is that you see the worst sides of people for sure, but it allows you to bring out the best in yourself and like speak up for what you believe in and then okay, well, what is yeah. it that uh, when you say that where that change come from what did that where, what sparked that what was it about what you were processing that sort of informed you that no I'm at now going to actively sort of step out there I think like I said I grew up and I just took it for granted that everyone was treated equally and then coming to a much more diverse population I realized that that's not true at all and that's what our country was founded on, but it's not how it's being practiced today. And so everything that's happened in 2020 has been horrible, but it's really opened my eyes. So just everything that's happened has sort of catalyzed a change. I should just say something real powerful. Isn't it crazy that all this is happening in the year 2020? <laughs> So we can all see clear, yeah. perfect oh, vision. Okay. That's a good. That's, it's, a, that's it's, a very wise. Uh, yeah. 